So I got inspired to make a video. I'm in a little bit of a life dilemma right now, not too major or anything like that, but I have a light switch that's loose. And anybody who's worked in electrical work, um, you, you don't want things to become a slippery slope when you're dealing with the electricity industry. Nah, but for real, I've actually had some time in some blue collar fields. I've uh, worked as a welder, a plumber, an electrician. So I tend to be a jack of all trades. Only problem is I could get seri in serious trouble with um, my unit if I try to work on it myself. So I had to call in a work order, let it set over the weekend, and then I had to call it in today on a Monday. But as I waited, I was also thinking about the blue collar industry. Um, and basically, um, we had a dude who was supposed to be on call on Sundays and he actually just kind of refused to show up and ask me to date to um, not put in a work order. So I went over to the people in charge and put in a work order, um, basically because if this guy thinks that he's going to be able to not tell his boss that he chose to totally dismiss something that could potentially be hazardous to people. Like, look, man, I really try not to be a Karen, but um, you had to bring my inner Karen out because once... I see things could be potentially dangerous and you want to let that slide. Uh, yeah, no, I have to, I have to say something, but that's not the point of the video. The point of the video is, is that we do actually have a lot of uh, younger people out there nowadays in our workforce who are inspired to get out into the blue collar field. And you know what? I like that because throughout time we have been told that a college degree is the only way you're going to make it in this world. But then if you look at most people who get a college degree, they're either like loaded with debt. They don't have any prospects. You could spend four years of your life with no actual valuable skills. Honestly, before you sign up even for a computer science degree, there's IT cert programs that could probably teach you a lot. But with blue collar industries, you could do apprenticeships for electricians and plumbers and everything like that and actually earn money while you learn a valuable skill that you can get more proficient at and then bring out into the workforce. And those things are always in demand. There's always going to be lights that need to be turned on. There's always going to be plumbing that needs to be done. Uh, there's always going to be things that need to be welded. Anytime you put a trade under your belt, you're basically setting yourself up for always having work. And you know what? Never make one thing your dependent source of income. While you have one venture really rolling, see if you can learn some things or read some books on the side that set you up for some more knowledge and other aspects of life. Never stop skill maxing, basically. Treat it like a game of Skyrim. You know, once you uh, master your archery, move on to your smithing. Once you master your smithing, move on to your light armor techniques. But I did want to make a video talking about the pros and cons of um, working in the blue collar industry. Now, obviously, a lot of what I said are a lot of the pros, but there are a few cons because sometimes we tend to get a what I call the fairy tale idea that is sold to us via like media where it seems a little more glamorous than it is. And then when we find the reality, we allow the reality to discourage us because we end up throwing the baby with the bathwater. Meaning we think that because something's not perfect, therefore it's bad. When the reality of life is nothing is perfect. So, number one, just remember, early mornings. If you're a person who likes to be out at night, um, in order to get well rested for the day for a blue collar position, unless you're going to be hopped up on monster energy drinks... Chances are you're probably going to want to get a good night's sleep at around like 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. Because 3 a.m. wake-ups can sometimes be the case. I remember when I was doing some stone masonry and making tables, we opened up shop at 3 a.m. and we worked until noon. So odd hours is obviously something that you're going to really want to pay attention to. And remember how I brought up monster energy drinks, man? Now let me tell you sometimes, if you're like in a higher-up position in the blue-collar industry... And I've actually been in management positions before. That's a lot of hours that you're going to be working. And sometimes your body's going to get very used to coffee and other caffeine stuff. So just to let you know, you're probably going to build a caffeine tolerance to the point where you're probably going to need to drink energy drinks just to feel that buzz. Definitely not the best thing for your health. But if you actually are worried about caffeine causing you to like have some sort of heart palpitation or something like that, uh, just be aware of that. Like, try not to drink too much coffee because coffee can be a gateway thing. Um, or just keep it moderated because uh, you're going to want to feel that buzz when you have to work overtime. 
But remember how I said long hours? Sometimes there's some positions where you're just not going to move up and you have to take the base pay for what it is and work around with that job. So if you get ever caught in a position where you feel like um, you're not getting paid enough or there's no moving up, um, the good news and the bad news is that you could always hop around a little bit. But, you know, job hopping, that could be a double-edged sword. Sometimes employers know that you have uh, – that you have to leave situations where you can't support yourself or you're not growing in that environment. But other times, some people will look at you in that aspect where they think you're job hopping, which also judgmental management. What you got to understand is when you're working blue collar, man, you are sometimes dealing with uh, what my father used to call the lowest common denominators of society. A lot of people who are unreliable, a lot of people who have been to prison, a lot of people who have heavy um, substance usages in their past. I remember one time when I was welding, I signed up for a position at a steel mill and I actually just left a company very soon um, for working on fences and I actually put on my resume that I worked there for two weeks. Now, should I obviously have done that? Um, probably not, but I was understanding the guy to hear out my um, side of the story or never mind. I was expecting him to, but I was expecting a little too much at the point. Mainly the guy that was working at the fence company, he was just not knowing what he was doing with the company at all. Um, obviously when you sign on for any job, they're going to try to sell you on this position, but they're not going to tell you any of the negatives. And then you have to find out once you sign up for the job. But the way this guy talked about everybody, he said that, you know, everyone he hired, uh, was just not fit, but you could tell that this guy was just a piece of work. So I had vacating the, the position and then moved on to another one, like a more professional steel mill, if you will. And I think the guy was so used to dealing with people who lie constantly and people who either just don't show up to work because they don't feel like it, uh, don't want to go around with the training processes or anything like that, that they're so used to dealing with those types of people that if you're more educated and you're more professional, it's almost like they don't sometimes believe it. Like there, there are... This isn't the rule, but you just got to understand that these scenarios are out there. And also when dealing with a lot of the lower common denominators, like someone who probably just did a five-year sentence and this is the only job they can do, sometimes you are going to be trained by those people and they do not take their training seriously. So you need to take full accountability for all your own training, especially if you're in a position like that. Now, there are good trainers. There are people who are actually passionate about that. I remember when I was a plumber for a while, the guy that I trained under – and learned a lot under this guy was really passionate about bringing up a workforce and it's surprising when you actually see a guy who's that dedicated to bringing up normal everyday workers and trying to make a greater good aspect of the culture that we have in our workforce in america where a lot of that professionalism tends to be dying out but it's all about knowing which one's which understand who has a high turnover rate and why um, some people don't but some people, some places just create revolving doors. And I used to think that, oh, I was just a bad worker, but no, nah. I mean, some people in management, there's actually a position, there's, there's actually a positional uh, saying, whether you're working blue collar, white collar, whatever collar you want to call it, um, just because someone's in charge doesn't mean that they are right. And actually there's a lot of people who will attest that there are people who are in positions of power that they just are not equipped to be in because they abuse that power and every other thing. But also, yeah, no, that comes to my final point, uh, the culture overall, which I will be honest, is a mixed bag. Um, there's good, there's the bad, there's the ugly. Um, that's everywhere you go. Um, just, you know how it is, you know how the workforce can be. Sometimes it's tribal, and rarely is it fair. I don't say that to sound jaded. I'm just saying that because I've been around and I understand the absolute struggle that it could go through. Understand that mainly people who have taken blue collar positions before this gigantic online push to throw people into hands-on work. Um, there's a lot of people, not, not like I'm not going to say most because that's not a really fair statement, but a lot of them, a lot of them are there because they need to be there. And I think it's interesting that a lot of guys are finding solace in blue collar work, which is good because to a lot of society, it's not the most glamorizing thing, obviously. And that's also a kind of tragic part is because it's so undervalued, but so necessary 
Um, but a lot of blue collar workers are projected on of it, obviously as, um, as being, uh, less desirable. And in some cases, Hey, a lot of those workers have been to prison and they're there because they have to be there. Um, a lot of those blue collar work jobs will take on a lot of former felons, a lot of former convicts, a lot of former drug addicts. Basically, that's just the way it is, man. And I know this is going to sound very misanthropic, but when you're an educated person who wants to go in and you sound like you have sense, it could kind of be like you're entering prison when you're typically a law-abiding citizen. You just might feel like you don't fit in. Like, you ever see those movies where the guy is a successful, like, accountant or something, and then he gets thrown into prison, and they could just tell you're not like the rest of us? Sometimes that is the case, especially if you're new to the field. And that's why I try to keep to myself, or I try to keep to myself whenever I was working in those fields, just because a lot of the topics I usually talk about in conversations are a little more sophisticated, and some of those guys who aren't as sophisticated or have been to prison... They could tell as soon as you're talking about algorithms and computers and stuff like that, that, um, yeah, no, this guy's different than what we usually deal with on a day-to-day basis. Now, sometimes that's a good thing, and sometimes they could feel threatened. Sometimes they could do all sorts of things. I'm not saying it's always dangerous, but whatever their reasons are, just understand that I've had that culture shock where I was usually working in an office setting and then once I started working in more construction areas, it was interesting. They looked at me like, uh, you're typically not around areas like this, are you? But the good news is, is that it is okay. I'm just saying be aware of these things and navigate according to the advice I've given you. Now, is it always going to be as dark as the scenarios I've just laid out? No. There are some work cultures in the hands-on environment that are pretty awesome. There are some exceptions to those rules that I just laid out where the complete opposite, people are very supportive, people want to see their employees succeed, Um, pay is good, they want to make sure you move up in the companies. But in the real world, not every scenario is just hunky-dory. And to all the guys who want to go into the blue-collar work field, I'm not saying don't do it. All I'm saying is just be aware of the pros and the cons and choose your trade and when you do, Uh, show up, you know, get passionate about it. Don't get over passionate about it, but just take pride in what you're doing and understand that the work that you're taking in and the work that you are putting in there is very valuable to a lot of people. Um, A lot of us, especially out here in America, we tend to take our lights turning on and our plumbing working for granted. But to those of us who understand the value and the necessity as such, I can tell you when you guys go out there and you're trying to uh, find some skill, some paid learning skills out there. Um, Let me tell you, I salute you 100%. But that's all I got to say. Cheers next time.